I would like to thank Ordo Juris and Collegio Intermario for this invitation to briefly speak today about the legal heritage of Latin civil law in the contemporary world. It is an honor to be a part of this event on freedom and order, even if remotely. I will speak about the one contribution of Latin American civil law systems that I consider to be the most meaningful or significant to the current framework of international human rights law. And that is the legal recognition of the unborn child as a human person entitled to the right to life in Latin America. That contribution, um, that Latin contribution can be primarily illustrated in the American Convention on Human Rights. This is an international treaty adopted by most Latin American and Caribbean nations that establishes an international obligation to legally protect every person's right from the moment of conception, as you can see in the text here. Article four of the convention has been identified by international human rights scholars as the most emphatic recognition of the prenatal right to life to date in any international treaty. The recognition of a right to life from conception in this treaty seems to be distinctly inspired by the region's predominantly Catholic values, a Catholic vision of human rights, a Catholic moral understanding of the natural law in general, and in particular, um, a, a respect for prenatal life. Latin American states have also contributed to the understanding of the Convention on the Rights of the Child as protecting the right to life of unborn children. Since uh, the pre preparatory work of the 1959 Declaration on the Rights of the Child, which led to the adoption and parts of its text made it to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, uh, Latin American states affirmed their view that the child's right to life was protected from the moment of conception. In a proposal introduced by Argentina and supported by all the Latin American states enumerated here, Latin American and Caribbean states, um, so again, that declaration then led to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, which, as you probably well know, was first drafted by Poland, which I imagine is a fact that your country must be very proud of. The Polish representative to the CRC Preparatory Work Conference, um, his name, and I hope I'm not mispronouncing it, although I imagine I am, Adam Lopatka, indicated that the convention was intended to allow states to legally protect the unborn child. This was done by the introduction in the preamble of the terms before as well as after birth, quote unquote, when referring to legal protection, human rights protection being recognized for the, for children. So it would apply before as well as after birth, therefore implicitly protecting the unborn child. So uh, just as much as it was a Polish contribution to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, um, this has, had been supported by Latin American countries even, um, even before the convention was adopted in, in, the dec in the draft Declaration on the Rights of the Child, which later, um, the text of which later became the convention. At the domestic level, at the national level, Latin American nations have a long held uh, legal juridical tradition of recognizing and protecting the unborn child's right to life from conception. One that is very much alive today, that tradition is very much alive in 2021. Since the 1970s, Latin American countries have been pioneers in explicitly recognizing prenatal rights in their national constitutions. Eight states so far have adopted explicit constitutional provisions recognizing and protecting the right to life from conception, something that has not yet happened in any other region in the world. It happened with Ireland and Western Europe, which used to recognize um, the unborn child's right to life. However, that provision was um, over, overturned, as, as you know, by referendum in Ireland. These states, however, continue, have passed um, since the 70s, these um, constitutional amendments recognizing the unborn child's rights. And those amendments still prevail, prevail today. Honduras actually updated its uh, constitutional recognition of the unborn child's uh, right to life to specifically ban elective um, voluntary abortion. For all countries in the region, even those that do not have 
explicit constitutional protections. And I just want to add that some countries, um, even though some countries don't have explicit constitutional protections, some Supreme Courts or high courts, such as Argentina's, have found that their constitutions contain implicit uh, constitutional right protections uh, for unborn life, for embryonic life or fetal life. So many more um, constitutions have implicit protections, but in any case, there's a large body of domestic norms in Latin America and the Caribbean, um, recognizing the unborn child as a person, as a human being, um, sometimes even as a child and protecting his or her right to life from conception. These can be found in civil laws, uh, civil codes, juvenile codes, family law codes, um, and, and domestic, uh, primary, domestic primary laws. Several of these laws codify, for instance, the pro nascitus principle, which favors the unborn child um, in cases of doubt, when there is doubt about the, his or her existence in criminal and civil jurisdiction. Most civil codes also establish that the unborn is entitled to legal protection, even though he or she may not enjoy legal capacity or legal personhood for the purposes of civil transactions, which minors generally don't. A general presumption for unborn children's entitlement to property and succession rights is recognized in national civil codes as well, even though it is usually contingent upon a child's live birth, in which case it applies retroactively back to the time of conception. Some Latin American states have also recognized economic and social rights belonging to the unborn child, such as the right to health, survival, and development. These rights are perceived not merely as a right belonging to mothers, um, but also as a right of unborn children. And equal protection is granted to both. In addition, some family law statutes have recognized legal parent-child relationships between biological parents and their unborn children, involving some parental rights and duties. For instance, the right of a father to establish paternity before birth or the duty of a father to pay prenatal child support, um, alimentos graviticos, it is called in Brazil, for instance. Most states also authorize the appointment of a legal representative or a guardian ad litem for an unborn child in administrative or judicial proceedings that involve property or inheritance rights. That doesn't mean that proposals to abolish these prenatal life protections have not been uh, advanced. Uh, they have been, and uh, mostly in order to create a legal entitlement to elective voluntary abortion, both at the national and international level through the Inter-American Human Rights System and the United Nations System's uh, proposals to abolish prenatal life protections have advanced in Latin America. To date, however, um, as of 2021, no Latin American state has fully decriminalized abortion. Despite a significant prevalence, significant prevalence of abortion rights advocacy and pressure in international human rights politics, Latin American nations still categorize um, elective abortion as a criminal practice and continue to generally regard it as a violation of the unborn child's right to life and personal integrity, even where statutory provisions for non-punishment of abortion exist. Other practices that directly affect prenatal life, such as forced abortion, fetal homicide, and fetal injury, are also sanctioned with criminal and civil, civil penalties in the region. Latin American and Caribbean laws generally establish narrow exceptions to the rules regarding abortion as a crime and waive criminal punishment for abortion only in limited circumstances, mostly when the mother is suffering from a life-threatening health condition. Other criminal punishment exemptions vary and the regulation is not homogenous in the region. Around half of all states have exempted abortions from criminal punish punishment where a pregnancy results from a sexual crime, such as incest or rape. And only about a third have passed exceptions for non-lethal health risks to the mother or for fetal viability or fetal disability, which um, can be properly called eugenic abortion. Decriminalization of abortion in the region has only been partial. 
It has been irregular, um, inconsistent, and often advanced by the national judiciaries rather than the legislatures. High courts have been responsible for the creation of some grounds for abortion in states' parties, such as three grounds for abortion in Colombia, authorization for abortions of anencephalic children in Brazil, and for abortions of children conceived in rape in Argentina and most recently in Ecuador. It must be said, however, that no decision authorizing the non-punishment of abortion in domestic high courts in the region has been unanimous. One or more judges have dissented in every instance, and courts have been deeply divided over the issue, as illustrated by the Chilean constitutional decision, which upheld an abortion statute in, 20, in 2017. No Latin American state has decriminalized any abortions through popular vote. Only two states, Argentina and Uruguay, have decriminalized abortions via legislature adopted statutes. These countries, Argentina and Uruguay, currently have the most liberal abortion regimes in the region by allowing first trimester abor abortions. However, later term abortions that do not meet certain requirements continue to be illegal. And even in those jurisdictions, elect elective abortion is not celebrated as a constitutional right or as a human right of women, as it is, for instance, in the United States where abortion is a constitutional right. Elective abortion in general is not understood as an entitlement of the pregnant woman in Latin America or as a constitutional right in any Latin American jurisdiction. Arguments of female autonomy, privacy, and gender equality have been rejected as legal justifications for the creation of abortion rights in constitutional courts in the region. And the rights of the unborn child have always been brought up. Respect for prenatal life in Latin America Latin America and the Caribbean has transcended governments and partisan politics. Traditional allies of abortion rights advocates in other regions of the world have actively resisted decriminalization of abortion in Latin America. For instance, socialist presidents like Gabriel Vasquez from Uruguay and Rafael Correa from Ecuador have opposed decriminalization of abortion. The leftist Sandinista government of Nicaragua has fiercely defended its full abortion ban against enormous international pressure, including sanctions, financial sanctions from some EU countries. Medical organizations and professional colleges, as well as top academics have spoken against abortion in Argentina, Chile, and other countries. In contrast with North American and Western European professional organizations and academia, which have traditionally sided with abortion rights advocacy. That said, abortion rights advocacy has deeply divided nations, institutions, and individuals within Latin American and Caribbean countries, forcing them to take a position on a single issue that seems to have, been to have taken precedence over any and all other feminist causes, over any and all problems affecting women today, including poverty. Abortion advocacy has pitted believers against non-believers liberals against conservatives, nationalists against globalists. It has raised larger jurisprudential questions in Latin America regarding constitutional interpretation, treaty interpretation, how new rights are created, and who has the authority to do so. Latin American law protection of the right to life of unborn children is no doubt under attack, both internally and externally. But for now, it remains as, its great, as one of the greatest contributions to international human rights law. Hopefully more Christian nations will in the future reject the false understanding of female empowerment and promote true nonviolent alternatives and compassionate support for girls, women, children, and families facing unplanned pregnancies. Thank you for your attention today and I will be glad to um, get any comments or questions by email. Thank you very much.